we did bring this topic up. Let's go ahead and rehash it a little bit. Uh, the Bucks are they buyers in the draft or not? Are they looking to move up in the first? What, what would you think the the emphasis is for the Buccaneers on draft night? I, you know, there's two things. The first thing is, do the tackles start getting taken? Because offensive tackle seems to be conventional wisdom on what the Bucks want. So up in front of them, around four, around six or seven, six is still the Chargers at the moment, who apparently need a quarterback. At seven, at eight, in front of the Bucks at 14, do the tackles start getting taken, and does that spook them? Does that make them uh, want to move up from 14 maybe to 10 or something like that to grab one of these guys that's out there uh, at tackle. So we'll see. We'll, we'll try to, to determine that as, as everything unfolds. And here's another important point. Jason Light, in his history as the Bucks GM, and this will now be his seventh draft uh, as the Bucks general manager, has never traded up in the first round. He has traded back, I believe, on three occasions, and usually it's only back a spot or two, something like that, to acquire a later pick. So to just file those two things away. Did the tackle start coming off the board, which would be a Buccaneer need? And he's not a guy that has moved up before, but like we were talking about earlier in the conversation, maybe this is an all chips in the middle of the table here year in 2020 and try to trade up and go get that tackle to help out. Chris, before we went live, that's one thing that you brought up was the idea of moving up in the draft is, uh, for the most part, a bad idea. Can you talk about that, uh, about that situation? Yeah, just a little bit. Um, my, Mike, I like listening to Mike Lombardi. Um, he he's just he's been a GM. He's been a, a player personnel guy for a lot of different teams. Um, he's been in a ton of locker rooms uh, or front offices more than locker rooms, and, and he knows how to run these teams. And he is a just vehement believer. He's talked to a lot of people. Anybody you're willing to move up for has to be a quarterback because they're the only position that can really change your franchise's career forever. Um, and he just thinks draft picks are too valuable to move up for any other position. A, because it's a 30% chance that the guy is going to be, or a 60% chance that the guy is going to be it or not. So you've got about 40% chance that you're going to miss on the pick, and nobody wants to think that. But why would you spend extra assets on, you know, what's a little bit better than a coin flip and if you've done your due diligence? And, um, and, and then at a position that just doesn't seem to affect the game the way quarterbacks do just stay where you're at and, and, and get your guy, uh, you know, look at the board and, and take whoever you can, which is why he's a believer of moving back a lot. You see Belichick do it. Um, but, but that's not bill. A lot of people do it. The Ravens moved back three times a year. They got Lamar Jackson and, and they completely reworked a lot of their, their team in that one draft. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm of that mindset. I think if you move up for a player and it's not a quarterback, you wasted a move. Well, and generally speaking, you are correct. Uh, it is such a quarterback driven league. Yes. But two, two of them came to mind. One of them recent and one of them distant, but they're both great examples. The Atlanta Falcons traded a boatload of picks to move up at least 10 spots. And it may have been more. We have to look it up with the Cleveland Browns. Yes. The Cleveland Browns <laughs> to go get a guy named Julio Jones. Cause they were in love with what Julio Jones could bring them, pairing him with Matt Ryan, helping their offense. I think that worked out really well for the Falcons, and the Browns are still the Browns. So we have that. And then the, the one thing I was thinking when you were talking about that, yes, the NFL has changed greatly, but this is now the 25th anniversary of arguably the greatest Buccaneer draft that they've ever had in the opening round, where they traded down – and we're able to still get a guy by the name of Warren Sapp, whose stock was falling uh, because of drug rumors and, and question marks about his character. Uh, remember, the Philadelphia Eagles very famously took a guy named Mike Mamula because he looked so good in a T-shirt and shorts at the Combine with all the workouts. And they just totally ignored the fact that he was playing at Boston College and what his game tape looked like versus what Warren Sapp looked like at the University of Miami at the highest level. So the Bucks traded down, but then then decided in the in the late stages of the first round, which was taking forever back in 1995, 15 minutes a pick, and they would even take longer than that, it seemed like at times, 
So the first round literally took like almost seven hours for it to unfold. And that, those were the days, guys, when they did like the first three rounds on Saturday and then the rest of the draft on Sunday. That Saturday started at noon and didn't end until almost midnight because of how long the oh, first yeah. round was that year. But the Bucks jumped back in the first round making a trade with Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys and drafting a guy by the name of Derek Brooks, who they believed, having watched him at Florida State, projected to be a big-time hitter, a big-time linebacker, a little undersized. Everybody ridiculed him for doing it. Brooks and Sapp both in the Hall of Fame and helped the Buccaneers win a Super Bowl. So there are examples uh, that it has worked out for a team, but by and large, if you're not doing it for a quarterback, it's probably